Hello everyone. Today in dermatology lectures, I'm going to talk about psoriasis. Please subscribe to my channel. If you're watching my video for the first time, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell icon for the notifications. Psoriasis is a common long-term systemic inflammatory condition which can affect every aspect of people's life and is associated with multiple coexistent conditions including psoriatic arthritis, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, inflammatory bowel disease, anxiety and depression, and metabolic syndrome. Instituting early effective treatment for psoriasis is key to preventing unnecessary suffering, enabling people to live full and fulfilling lives, and may also reduce comorbidity. Screening for and treatment of coexistent conditions in people with psoriasis presents an opportunity to improve well-being and prevent morbidity. The etiology of psoriasis is now very much better understood. It is caused by an inflammatory response to the interaction of environmental factors such as stress, drugs, for example, beta blockers, lithium, and anti-malarials, trauma, smoking, infections, for example, streptococcus and HIV, with the genetically susceptible individuals. The initiation of the psoriatic process causes the release of TNF-alpha, interleukin-1 beta, and interleukin-6 from the keratinocytes, which act on dendritic cells to release interleukin-12 and interleukin-23, which trigger the Th1 and Th17 immune systems respectively, and innate immune system cells to release interleukin-17A, interleukin-1F, and interleukin-22. These cytokines in turn initiate keratinocyte turnover. The genetics are complex and several different psoriasis susceptibility genes have been identified. The risk of a child developing psoriasis if both parents are affected is 41% and if one parent is affected is 14%. Other factors for psoriasis are infections, drugs, smoking, alcohol, obesity, stress, trauma, for example, from scratching and lack of exercise. There is now evidence to suggest that exercise, weight loss, smoking cessation, and reducing stress can all lead to an improvement in psoriasis severity. Psoriasis is usually diagnosed on clinical features alone. There are several subtypes of psoriasis and two peak times of onset, early adulthood, teenage, and later adulthood, late 40s and 50s. Men and women are equally affected. Chronic plaque psoriasis is characterized by erythematous, itchy, scaly plaques with coarse silvery scale, classically affecting the scalp, extensor elbows, and knees and lower back natal cleft, though any area can be involved. Gutted psoriasis presents as numerous small scaly plaques of psoriasis scattered over the body and limbs in a droplet-like pattern. It is typically triggered by a streptococcal infection. Gutted psoriasis can be self-limiting, but develops into chronic plaque psoriasis in approximately a third of individuals. It responds quickly to phototherapy, but may recur with future streptococcal infections. Flexural or inverse psoriasis is often more pruritic and less scaly than conventional psoriasis with smooth erythematous plaques in skin folds, such as axillae, groin, submammary area, and natal cleft. It can be exacerbated by concurrent secondary infection. Palmer plantar pustular psoriasis appears as sterile pustules on a background of erythema and scaling of the palms and the soles. About 10% of the patients will have psoriatic plaques at other sites too. 
palmer plantar pustular psoriasis can be difficult to treat, painful and disabling for patients. It is associated with smoking and can respond to the application of super potent topical steroids, but will frequently require treatment. Unfortunately, smoking cessation does not always result in an improvement. Generalized pustular psoriasis is a rare but serious form of psoriasis and can be life-threatening. It is characterized by intense erythema studded with pustules which may coalesce to form lakes of pus. Generalized pustular psoriasis can occur spontaneously or be precipitated, for example, by the long-term use of superpotent topical steroids or withdrawal of oral steroids. Generalized pustular psoriasis is a medical emergency. Erythrodermic psoriasis is widespread psoriasis affecting more than 90% of the body surface area. It can occur after prolonged application of potent or superpotent, superpotent uh, topical steroids, infections, or stress. Erythrodermic psoriasis is also a medical emergency. Certain sites, if affected by psoriasis, can have a particularly high impact on the individual and should be given special consideration and importance in management. These include scalp, face, hands, nails, and genitals. Nail changes appear in about half of a people with psoriasis and 87% of the people with psoriatic arthritis. The features of nail matrix psoriasis are pitting, leukonychia, red spots on the lunula, and crumbling of the nail plate. The features of nail bed psoriasis are onycholysis, that is separation of the nail plate nail plate from the nail bed, distal splinter hemorrhages, subungal hyperkeratosis that is scaling under the nail and oil drops or salmon patches. Zoriatic arthritis affects up to the 30% of the people with psoriasis and usually occurs within the first 10 years of developing psoriasis. Typical features are pain, stiffness and swelling of the joints worse in the morning and improving after exercise. Dactylitis, that is swelling of the whole digit, is a feature of psori uh, psoriatic arthritis. Axial psoriatic arthritis can present with back pain at night and stiffness in the morning. Tendonitis, such as Achilles tendonitis, is also frequent. All people with suspected psoriatic arthritis should be referred to a rheumatologist at the onset of the symptoms in order to prevent permanent joint damage. Annual screening for psoriatic arthritis using a validated screening tool such as the psoriasis epidemiology screening tool PEST is recommended. Psoriasis is associated with cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, fatty liver, inflammatory bowel disease, metabolic syndrome, psoriatic arthritis, and anxiety and depression. It is recommended that all people with psoriasis are screened for obesity, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and diabetes at first presentation, and cardiovascular risk is assessed every five years thereafter. Baseline and annual screening for arthritis and anxiety and depression is recommended. Psoriasis is exacerbated by smoking and alcohol consumption. People with psoriasis should be asked about alcohol and smoking at the presentation and screening should be repeated annually. Histology of psoriasis is characterized by parakeratosis, and thickened projections of the prickle cell layer of the keratinocytes, that is psoriasiform hyperplasia. There is no granular layer. Polymorphonuclear, nu uh, polymorphonuclear leukocytes and lymphocytes infiltrate dermis and epidermis. The first presentation to a clinician for psoriasis is particularly important as it provides an opportunity to give the person with psoriasis hope about effective treatment options and an opportunity for promotion of well-being with screening for comorbid conditions.
The first consultation should include establishment of patient's goals and treatment preferences, assessment of psoriasis severity, assessment of impact of psoriasis, screening for comorbid conditions, for example, obesity, hypertension, anxiety and depression, diabetes, psoriatic arthritis, and hyperlipidemia, screening for alcohol use and smoking, arrange follow-up in four to six weeks. Selecting the appropriate therapy for a patient with psoriasis can be challenging. Education and support are essential. For example, providing a clear explanation of how to use treatments and when to expect to see the results, usually in four to six weeks. A follow-up appointment for four to six weeks after starting a topical therapy to assess tolerability and efficacy prevents the long-term use of ineffective treatments and allows timely escalation of treatment. All patients using topical steroids preparations should have at least annual follow-up. Topical treatments include moisturizers and soap substitutes provide comfort, reduce scaling and improve barrier function. Vitamin D analogs, for example, calcipotriol ointment can be used for long-term management of patients. Patients should expect a reduction in scaling after two weeks and a reduction in redness at four weeks. They are generally well tolerated, although greasy and irritation can be an issue. Excessive quantities of vitamin D analogs can affect calcium metabolism. The maximum amount varies with different preparations. Their effects can be enhanced by occlusion, for example, with cling film. Cold tar preparations can also be used for long-term ma management. They also take several weeks to work and their effects can be enhanced by occlusion with cling film. Depending on the concentration of coal tar, irritation can be an issue, as can the order and staining associated with these preparations. Topical steroids work quickly and are useful for very inflamed psoriasis. They are generally well tolerated. They become less effective with continued use and can cause rebound psoriasis and irreversible skin atrophy. Potent steroids should ideally not be used for longer than four weeks and with at least a four week gap between the treatments. Combined vitamin D and steroid preparations. We tend not to routinely recommend the use of combined steroid and vitamin products as they can promote the prolonged use of potent steroids. It is preferred to prescribe a potent steroid separately from a topical vitamin D analog to use at the opposite ends of the day. This enables patients to discontinue the use of steroid preparation after four weeks of use and to continue with the topical vitamin D preparation alone. Vitamin A analogs are usually applied once daily. Irritation can be a problem in which, in which case a moderate potency steroid ap applied at the other end of the day is helpful. As with all retinoids, pregnancy avoidance advice should be given. Lethrinol requires experience in prescribing and an explanation of the effects of skin irritation and staining of the skin, clothing, baths and showers. It is, however, an effective treatment and can induce prolonged periods of remissions. Treatment options and advice for special sites must be considered. For face, mild or moderately potent topical steroid for one to two weeks and then calcitriol ointment once a day. Topical calcineurine inhibitors are also highly effective. For scalp, combination of treatments are the most effective. For example, a cold tar shampoo twice a week and an anti-yeast shampoo three times a week for four weeks and then weekly ongoing together with calcipotriol scalp application twice daily. Shampoos should be left on the scalp for 10 minutes before rinsing out. 
for a more intensive treatment a cold towel preparation can be left on overnight and washed out the following day remove greasy scalp preparations by applying shampoo to dry hair and greasy preparation before contact with water for inflamed scalp psoriasis potent uh, steroid scalp gels and lotions can be used initial prior to the introduction of calcitriol scalp uh, application these should not be used for more than 4 to 6 weeks many lotions and gels are alcohol based and may cause a, an initial stinging on application flexural and genital psoriasis for this kind of psoriasis avoid irritants and use soap substitutes otherwise treat as per facial psoriasis if indicated swab for streptococcus and staphylococcus should be taken and treat accordingly watch out for superimposed candida uh, that is with satellite pustules and fungal infections caution for patients with a history of herpes or warts as steroids and calcineurin inhibitors may exacerbate warts or reactivate herpes simplex calcitriol must be tried instead ultraviolet light therapy is helpful for extensive psoriasis psoriasis that is unresponsive to topical therapy and gutted psoriasis narrow band ultraviolet b and sorolin plus ultraviolet light a that is puva are commonly prescribed patients are required to attend two or three times a week for 8 to 10 weeks treatment is usually very effective but the duration of remission is variable the number of lifetime lifetime treatments is limited to minimize the risk of skin cancer systemic treatments such as methotrexate acetretin cyclosporin and fumaric acid esters are effective for moderate to severe psoriasis regular blood monitoring is required biologic medications are highly effective targeted therapy is administered by subcutaneous or intravenous injections they are offered to patients who have a pasi score greater than or equal to 10 and a dlqi dermatology life quality index greater than or equal to 10 and who have not responded to phototherapy and standard systemic medications this is all for today thank you everyone kindly subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon for the notifications keep watching skin doctor for you